All right, Helldivers 2 just had its first balancing patch since the game released a few weeks ago. I want to run through everything that's actually changed in the game and the physical changes to the weapons and abilities. And then after that, I'll get into some of my thoughts on them, but if you don't really want to stick around for my thoughts and listen to those, I won't be hurt. You can click off the video after the stats are done. So all this information comes from an article that Arrowhead Studios put out that I will link down in the video below if you want to see all the words for yourself. I'll be taking clips and quotes from the author of this article, Patrick Lasorda, who is Arrowhead's head of product testing. So the first change is a nerf to a fan favorite in the game so far, is the SG-225 Breaker. It had its amount of ammo decrease in each magazine, and they increased the recoil. The SG-8 Punisher, the pump action shotgun, had its damage per shotgun pellet increased, as well as the amount of stagger it does to enemies. The SG-225 SP Breaker Spray and Pray, we actually have some more set data here instead of just recoil has been increased abstractly. Here, the fire rate was increased from 300 rounds per minute to 330 rounds per minute, and the amount of shotgun pellets per shot was increased from 12 to 16. And they also added a slight nerf to this as well as they reduced the magazine capacity from 32 to 26. The Railgun's been a favorite so far for people in the game, and they've decided to nerf it a little bit to bring it in line with some of the other weapons and abilities. They reduced the armor penetrating to what they call medium armor penetrating, so it no longer can snipe right through chargers and bile titans. However, they also changed it so that it does a little less damage on safe mode, but still keeps that high damage on unsafe mode. They also decided to change it so that the Railgun does not do as much damage to what they call massive body parts, so like the really large portions of bile titans and whatnot and you get more damage out of headshots and weak points from it. A change I'm very excited about is the changes to the flamethrower. It says here they just directly up the damage for it. They felt like it wasn't doing enough, so more flamethrower damage. I love that. For the handheld laser cannon, they have increased its damage against massive body parts, again like on the titans and chargers, and they also increased its armor penetration to make it more in line with the how the orbital laser operates. They also made a nerf to the shield backpack. They increased the amount of time it takes for it to start recharging when the shield's not fully broken. So you can't just sit behind a rock for a little bit and then have it recharge immediately. It's going to take a little longer. They don't give any exact data here, unfortunately, but probably have to feel it out in the game. Closing out the updates they made, they changed the 120mm and the 380mm orbital barrages. They decided to have the area of effect for them shrunk in, as well as adding one extra salvo to each one. And that rounds out all the changes that have been made to the game as far as balancing. I'm not going to waste all your time with my thoughts if you're just here for the stats, so thank you for watching. Love if you hit that like and subscribe button. But if you are here for some of my thoughts, love if you stuck around. Getting into my thoughts here, I of course have thoughts on the actual changes themselves, but I want to talk about some of the tone of the article and how it was written by Patrick here, and what that makes me think about how the development team is viewing balancing. The short answer, I think it is phenomenal and has probably handled some of the best I've seen out of any game. Patrick here opens the article about talking about primary weapons. There's been kind of a feeling in the community that primary weapons don't deal enough damage. Patrick addressed that by saying, this is intentional. You need to rely on your stratagems and the strategies of your team to deal with enemies effectively. I think this is awesome. This game is not COD. This game is not Battlefield. Helldivers is unique in the way it uses stratagems. And I think that's awesome that instead of them saying, man, we need to pump up the primary weapon damage to keep people happy. They're saying, no, your primary weapon is a weapon you spawn with, but it is not the primary weapon of dealing with enemies in the game. The stratagems are. You want to take out a Bile Titan? You're not taking it out with a shotgun or assault rifle. You're going to need bombs from the sky. A little bit further down in the opening session here, Patrick talks about how some other games have gone with the don't nerf only buff strategy. This can be seen in a game like Destiny, where every new release, there's the new weapon you gotta get. And the way they go about that is saying, hey, it's stronger than the last ones. You gotta get this thing if you wanna stay relevant. I love that they're not going with that strategy, and instead they're trying to keep everything even with each other so people can use the weapon they feel like they like, or they feel like is more fun. So far, the uh, Breaker Shotgun has been the best one, but Personally, I really haven't liked using it. I've had a lot more fun using the Defender SMG. Does it put out as much damage? Technically no, but I feel like I use it better and I have a lot more fun with it. I think this will be phenomenal for the longevity of the game because it will keep any weapon from getting too strong. Because if you have one best weapon, everyone's gonna be like, I gotta use the best weapon, it's just the best. And you know what? It gets boring after a while. Think for a second if you're using the Breaker Shotgun for two months of this game and like there was no reason to use any other weapon. You're going to get kind of bored. It's going to be the same. It's going to get repetitive. People are going to stop playing. I think this is going to help with the longevity of the game because it's going to keep people mixing up, trying out new things, doing different stuff, and it's going to keep the game relevant longer. Which brings me to my next thought on something else Patrick was talking about in this article, the fantasy of weapons. 
they kind of have in their mindset how a weapon should feel, which I think is amazing. Instead of saying, well, we want a shotgun that does this much damage, this much recoil, X, Y, and Z, they're going for the feel. He talks about in the section about the breaker here how they want it to feel like a weapon where you're just pumping out shots like crazy, you're pumping out damage, so it should be strong. It should be a gun that's very strong. But they made those changes to get decided, ooh, it's a little too strong, so we're going to increase that recoil because it's a shotgun where you're pumping out a lot of shots, it should have high recoil. So to keep that feel of high damage, they didn't reduce the damage at all, they just increased that recoil. This feels like such a better way to decrease the effectivity of a gun and essentially balance it, but not just directly make it do less damage. They could have taken it out and said, all right, Breaker's doing too much damage, we gotta crank down the damage each pellet does. And you know what? You're gonna do exactly what you are doing before, and you're just gonna feel like it does less. You're gonna feel like the weapon got worse, it's not worth using, and you're gonna drop it. People are gonna be upset because, hey, that was my favorite gun. Now it sucks. But by just increasing the recoil, if you're really good with the breaker and you learn how to handle that recoil, it's not gonna have any drawback on you at all. So it kind of just adds a little higher skill to the breaker. My next weapon that I have some actual thoughts on here is the railgun changes. The railgun has been fantastic so far and I've loved using it. And I think I'm actually okay with the changes they're making here. It is a nerf, it's gonna do less armor penetration, so it's gonna hurt using it against stronger enemies. But the way they've said they changed it here is it was, they felt that it was too strong in the safe mode. So they changed it so that you kind of have to use the unsafe mode to make it as effective as it was before. So it'll still be fantastic against high health enemies, but you gotta run that risk of accidentally blowing yourself up when you're overcharging it. And this is another thing where I feel like it adds skill to the weapon. Like it's not just, all right, you can pump out damage, no problem. You gotta get good at walking that line of safe and unsafe with the safety there. And no matter how good you get, that always adds the time where if you're in a tough fight, you're on a level nine hell dive mission, no matter how good you get, you're gonna mess up time and blow yourself up. And you're gonna be pissed. You're like, oh my God, my real gun blew me up. When really you blew yourself up, but not to the point. But you know what? You're gonna pick up that railgun again because there's always that opportunity if you can do the insane damage. And if you get real good at it, you can really reduce that chance of blowing yourself up. And then, still a fantastic weapon. And some quick thoughts on the flamethrower as well. I'm so, so happy they decided to up the damage on it because I wanted to use the flamethrower against the bugs. It just feels right. You can do it and feel like Rambo. But when I tried it, it felt like it did no damage and I just died with it. So I'm so glad they're increasing the damage on that. I'm gonna be trying this out more. I also found their changes to the laser cannon very interesting. I too thought when I unlocked it that it was going to be like the orbital laser and you can just drill into enemies and take out high health enemies. And then when I tried it, that didn't end up being the case and like, it was kind of nice to sweep it around and wipe out low health enemies, but to be honest, I was using the SMG then and I could do that with the SMG. I could save that third stratagem weapon slot for something better than the laser cannon, so I just never really used it. That's nice to know that now they're intending this more as like a sniping laser to take on high health enemies. I'll definitely give it a try more, and I'm glad they're listening to how the community expected the weapon to be. Not only to say like, hey, we want this to do more damage, like, oh, we didn't think it was going to operate like this. And they said, you know what? I like the way you say it should operate. We're going to move it to that. I love that they're listening to community feedback. This shows that the devs truly care how the community feels, and they're not just adjusting the game to make sure things aren't out of whack. And some closing thoughts from me on the 120mm and 380mm artillery brushes. When I saw these, I was so excited to unlock them because I, for some reason, just loved the idea of shoot giant bullet from space, hit enemy with it. But then when I used it, it felt so spread out that I was never killing anything and it didn't feel like it did enough damage. So I'm so happy that they took that exact idea and said, all right, we're going to bring in the scatter area and we're going to give it more shots to shoot. That's exactly what I wanted. That is exactly what I wanted from this barrage here. In my tier list video, I said these were weak because they were too spread out and didn't do enough damage. They fixed exactly that. This is something I'll definitely be trying out more because, again, I love the idea of giant bullet from space. So to fit along with their idea of the fantasy view weapon, that should feel like it does a lot of damage because giant bullet from space do big damage, makes sense. Giant bullet from space don't do much damage, it just doesn't make sense to me. So that wraps up everything that changed and how I feel on it. Let me know down below how you feel about these changes. Let me know what you think on my thoughts here. Agree, disagree. I want to hear it all. I want to talk to some people. So comment down below if you've got thoughts on this. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, I'd love you for that like button. If you're looking to see more, consider hitting that subscribe button. Thanks, and I'll see you guys next time.